Successful barrel aging can be hit or miss, but in this video, we're going to hear the best tips from award-winning Belgian master brewer Frank Bone. Frank's been barrel aging Lambic beers longer than any other brewer in the world, and he has millions of liters of Lambic, all aging in barrels. Now make sure you're checking out the links in the descriptions, as there's a ton of resources down there to help you. Thank you again for joining us. And the first thing I wanted to know, though, Frank, because I, I think you know more about it than anyone else I know, is what makes barrel aging so unpredictable? It, it just stories that I hear from people that have attempted it have just they, they think it's a crapshoot. But you seem to do it all the time successfully. Barrel aging is, in our case, part of our um, brewing uh, techniques. Normally, if good beer is aged on barrels and uh, the work is done as it should, it is not problematic aging on barrels. But of course, if you put good beer on barrels and, and the barrels are problematic, there's something wrong with the barrels or something wrong with storage or with, uh, with time or with cleaning. Uh, it can ruin your beer, and it's clear that uh, if the beer is not okay, you, you cannot save it by putting it in, in a wooden barrel, that's for sure. Selecting the right barrel. If you're a brewer and you want to make a very good beer and you want to age it in, in a wooden barrel, it's clear that barrels that are in bad condition cannot be used in a brewery. Bad condition, I mean that barrels can have molds inside. If a barrel was used for beer or for another uh, content, for, for wine, for example, and the barrel was not cleaned and it was left in a place uh, with the right humidity and open, the barrel might be completely moldy inside. Molds are giving uh, a very bad taste to um, the liquids you put uh, in the cask. There is a molecule, it's called trichloranisole, TCA. If you find TCA in your liquid or in the barrel, don't use the barrel. So an easy way to select it is just blowing in the barrel in the bunch hole and smelling it. And if it smells moldy, if it smells old cupboard or uh, old basement or potato or mushroom or whatever, don't use this barrel use it for decoration but in such a barrel selecting barrels if it if the barrels are second hand it is important that your barrel contains something a beverage that goes well with beer because some um, beverages may be so uh, different from beer for example uh, spicy uh, beverages or beverages with some really strange tastes that do not fit with beer some brewers will avoid it of course it's not forbidden to use these barrels in small experiments, but in general, some barrels, second-hand barrels, fit better than others. Uh, in general, wine barrels, red wine or white wine, fit well for beer and for beers that need some whiskey qualities or some um, vanilla aroma. Of course, bourbon barrels will do very well, and that because of the, the use of American oak. And as you know, American oak is very much vanilla when it's when it's toasted if you buy very large casks it might be very important to select a cask that are in good condition because not only the the smell and the liquid that was in the cask should be okay but also the condition of the cask if it's an old cask and the hoops are not tight it helps to uh, to tighten the hoops and to ask Cooper to do some maintenance on the on the cask. And it is not a problem to buy a cask that has been dry for a, a certain time. If the condition is good and you can tighten the hoops, it helps to put some water on it for a number of weeks. And then the cask, the only question is just avoid to leave the water on it too long because your water can probably be contaminated and give very negative smells or tastes to your uh, to your beer so that is a start what, what is too long frank it depends if you put water on a cask in winter time and it's just above freezing point uh, on the place where you water it uh, you, you can do that for a month or two it's no problem if you do that and the outside temperatures are say 30 c of course 
even after a week, uh, your water can start to smell. So it depends on the outside temperatures. But watering a cask goes faster when the temperatures are higher. But it is prohibited to use boiling water or hot water in a cask because the, the wood will be deteriorated by the heat of the, of the water. It will swell very, very fast. And then the, the cask will be, afterwards the cask will be in very bad condition because of that. After selecting casks, what to do to prepare them for filling? One of the preparations is, of course, to put some water in it to be sure that the cask is tight. And then, of course, tightening the hoops. That is a work for coopers that should be done every year or nearly every year to keep the casks tight. And not only water or beer tight, but also gas tight. It's also important. And then, of course, you cannot do that when your casks are laying in the full uh, sun or just close to a boiler or at a place that is very windy because it will dry out uh, your, your cask. Did you say gas tight? No, the, not gas, but air is also a gas. It's a, it's a mixture of uh, nitrogen and oxygen and other gases. But so gas tight, it, it means that you cannot have a cask that is holding your beer, but that is not uh, gas tight. See what I mean? Imagine if you have a, a, a bottle, you fill the bottle, but the cork is not tight. Of course, you, you can will have ingression of oxygen through the... Uh, so so your, will it hold cork. a little pressure? That's what I, comes to mind. There is no need for, there is no need for pressure. It's a question to, uh, to have your, your cask well uh, tight. Other, otherwise, you will have evaporation of beer that is unwanted and influence of oxygen on your beer, of course. But preparing your casks or your kegs for the rest, after watering, they should be cleaned properly. In general, casks have to be cleaned, to be cleaned, not to be watered, but cleaned with uh, hot water so that they will dry. And then next day, burn some sulfur in it. If you don't burn sulfur, of course, the risk is there that you will have molds growing in your casks after two, three days. If the cask will be filled the day or the next day, you can avoid to burn some sulfur. And then filling casks, that's another, that's the next step. It depends, of course, at style of your beer, because it will be different from one beer to another. Filling barrels is also an important one, because it depends on the style. So you can ferment in your cask, what we do with Lambic, or you can put a finished beer and age it in a cask. You can do both. But filling barrels, um, you have to fill barrels, of course. If you don't fill them, then uh, then it's easy to make uh, uh, vinegar, but uh, don't do that. Another question, if your beer is aging in the wooden cask and uh, it takes up the taste of the cask from the new cask or from the liquid that has been in the cask before, it underwent the influence of yeasts of bacteria that were in the cask. If you, if you buy wine, casks, there will be wine, yeast and bacteria in the wood. They will in influence your beer. So uh, finally, after a time, your beer will be ready. One is that it depends on the beer. Some, some beers, uh, I think about uh, strong, dark beers, uh, they will only need a few months aging in, in whiskey barrels, bourbon barrels, for example. Uh, if you want a, a very long aging in, in casks, you really have to ferment in the casks. And then that's the most difficult thing uh, to do. Um, and when is the beer ready? In general, uh, when the fermentation degree is um, high enough, uh, in, in our case for Lambic, it's, it's clear that uh, for young Lambic, uh, fermentation degree will be about uh, 85, percent appearance and uh, it will be uh, 90 percent uh, in uh, beer of two years three years and beer of three or four years uh, often will have 100 percent appearance degree of uh, fermentation um, and then the beer is ready to be uh, bottled if it's in kept in good condition of course, when uh, your beer is ready and you want to, to bottle beer, it is important to do the transfer of your wooden casks to bottles while you avoid contact with oxygen. Very difficult thing because small 
wood and casks and oxygen and avoiding oxygen, it does not go together, but it is important. And so when casks are, as I said, they should be cleaned the same day or next day, dried. And when they are dry, the day after you burn some uh, sulfur in it to avoid molds growing. If you want to prepare them for the next batch, you need again the driver to tighten the, the rings or the hoops of the cast. This is really uh, important. If hoops are too large, they can be shortened by, by cutting the rivets and by making new holes in, in your uh, hoops, putting new rivets and that's how you shorten it. Or you can cut it and re-weld it and make it uh, smaller. But maintenance on the cast is very important. When the hoops are not tight, you your cast may leak, but also oxygen may be uh, a problem. If cars are dry, they should be, uh, of course, uh, the hoops should be uh, tightened, but not with uh, a very big hammer. If you do that with a um, hammer of two kilograms, for example, it will damage your cask when it will swell. So normally for small cars, say barracks, you will use a hammer of 350 grams, 400 grams maximum. For fooders, you will use two kilograms for the head and the, the second and the third uh, hoops will use three kilogram and for the last five kilogram hammer, which is quite a heavy uh, job. But it's important that the hoops and the rings are always tight. And then when your barrels are empty, do not put boiling water on it, put them on their head, put a few inches of uh, water inside and a few inches of water on the top. If you see that it's leaking and that you're not sure, you just can fill them completely with water, but don't keep that water in the cask for longer than a week because it might uh, give you also some other off flavors. Sometimes beer tastes like uh, harbor or like the green marine plants you, you can find on ships when it smells like that or right, like uh, rain tons. If it smells like that, it's it's a very important off flavor. So don't keep the water longer than one week on the cask unless, unless it's it's freezing time, but then you should avoid to, to freeze your uh, cask. Do you see uh, this picture of the, um, the big fooder? It's one that was, that had a problem with the bottom on the back because of, there was a problem with, but finally the bottom broke three years ago and then we had to replace the, the bottom. So this work was done four weeks ago and now we, water is uh, running in the vat and I expect to have it completely tight again within a few weeks. This one is, uh, the content of it is 26,000 uh, liters. So it's a hell of a job to, to dismantle it. To, uh, to and to build it up with new uh, bottom, but that's what we did, and so it will be ready to fill with beer um, just before or after New Year. That, so that looks like a lot of work. Four days for the wood, and two days for uh, shortening the hoops uh, with five guys. Now there's a link on the screen to view the entire interview.